Our next topic name is idle mode procedures. Let's get into the topic. Table on the screen presents the content of an RRC paging message. A single message can include up to 32 paging records and each paging record can address a single UE. The RRC paging message allows the UE to be addressed using either its 5G S TMSI or its full I R N T I. The I R N T I is applicable to UE which are paged from RRC inactive. The base station allocates an I R N T I when moving a UE from RRC connected to RRC inactive. The UE initiates the random access procedure after receiving an RRC paging message. The RRC setup request message is sent to MSG3 using a cause value of empty access. A NAS service request message is included within the RRC setup complete message. The base station forwards this NAS message to the AMF to complete the paging procedure. For a UE in RRC inactive, the serving base station maintains a record of the UE location in the terms of its allocated RAN notification area RNA. The UE triggers an RRC resume procedure with cause value MA update if it moves outside the allocated RNA. The UE does not update the network while moving within the allocated RNA. In general, this means that paging messages must be broadcast by all base stations belonging to the allocated RNA. In the case of RRC inactive, the UE-specific NGC connection towards the AMF and the UE-specific NGU connection towards the UPF are maintained. This means that the AMF can continue to forward NAS messages towards the serving base station and the UPF can continue to forward downlink data towards the serving base station. The serving base station is responsible for paging the UE to allow reception of the downlink NAS message or downlink data. Figure on the screen illustrates an example based upon the serving base station receiving downlink data from the UPF. The serving base station is reliant upon having an XN connection towards each of the base station within the RNA. The serving base station can then forward an XN AP, RAN paging message to each base station. The XN AP RAN paging message is represented in table. Alternatively, all cells within the RNA may belong to a single base station using the CU or DU split architecture. In this case, it is not necessary to rely upon XN connectivity. The UE identity index value is set equal to 5G STMSI mod 1024 that is a value from 0 to 1023 which occupies 10 bits. This value allows the target base station to determine the paging frames and paging occasions without having to transfer the full 5G STMSI across the XN interface. The UE RAN paging identity is the full IRNTI which was allocated to the UE within the RRC release message when moving the UE to RRC inactive. This identity is used to address the UE within the RRC paging message. The paging DRX specifies the DRX cycle used by the UE. This value allows the target base station to identify the appropriate paging frames and paging occasions. The RAN paging area allows the target base station to identify the cell which are required to broadcast the RRC paging message. The set of cells can be specified explicitly using up to 32 cell global identities CGI. Alternatively, they can be specified using up to 16 RAN area identities 
The use of RAN area identities relies upon each cell being configured with both a tracking area code and RAN area code. The paging priority can be included to prioritize specific paging messages at the target base station. The priority can be configured with a value from 1 to 8 where 1 represents the highest priority. If the paging procedure has been triggered by the reception of a downlink NAS message from the AMF, then a RAN paging priority may have been included within the NGAP, downlink NAS transport message. The assistance data for RAN paging can be used to provide the target base station with information regarding the retransmission of X and AP RAN paging messages. The serving base station can specify the current paging attempt count and the total number of attempts which are planned. The serving base station can also specify whether or not it plans to change the scope of the geographic paging area on the next paging attempt. Figure on the screen shows the paging procedure used to notify UE of a change to the system information or an incoming ETWS message. This procedure is applicable to UE in RRC connected, RRC idle and RRC inactive. In this case, the paging procedure does not use NGAP, XNAP nor RRC paging messages. Instead, the paging procedure uses only the payload of the PDCCH. Downlink control information DCI format 1 underscore 0 can include a short message when the CRC bits are scrambled using the PRNTI. This short message can be used to indicate that system information has been updated and needs to be reacquired or there is an incoming ETWS message. UE in RRC idle or RRC inactive monitor the PDCCH once per DRX cycle during the UE paging occasion. UE in RRC connected monitor the PDCCH once per system information modification period during any paging occasion. Assuming the UE has been configured with a common search space to monitor paging within the active bandwidth part. If the UE is paged with the system information change notification, then the UE reacquires the system information from the start of the next modification period. If the UE is paged within an ETWS notification, then the UE immediately reacquires SIB1 and checks for scheduling information which is applicable to SIB6 or SIB7 for ETWS and SIB8 for CMAS. The UE then proceeds to acquire the relevant public warning system SIB. Base station which use multiple beams to provide coverage across the cell area are required to broadcast paging messages across all beams. For example, a base station which uses 8 beams to provide coverage will be required to transmit each paging message 8 times. This means that paging occasions must allow sufficient time for UE to scan all the beams. Here I conclude this topic. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.